ハーフウェットの状態になるともうすごい要素だよね限界がすごい高いしね水線は It wasn't built to dominate drag strips. It wasn't built to chase numbers. It was built for balance. 9,000 revolutions per minute from a two liter four cylinder that screamed like it had something to prove. The Honda S2000 wasn't just another sports car, it was a mechanical love letter written by engineers who still believed perfection could be measured in feel. This is the story of Honda's last masterpiece and the engine that defined it, the F20C. The 1990s were changing. Cars were getting heavier and quieter and safer. But inside Honda's Tochigi R&D Center, one man wanted to build something pure. His name was Shigeru Orihara, the same engineer who had led the NSX project a decade earlier. The NSX had made people rethink what a supercar could be precise, usable, reliable. Now, Uehara wanted to prove that same precision could exist in something smaller, lighter, and more raw. But his inspiration didn't come from supercars, it came from Honda's past, from the tiny, screaming roadsters that built the company's reputation in the 1960s the S600 and S800. Back then, those cars were pocket sized revolutions high revving inline fours, dual overhead cams. Chain driven final drives. They embodied Soichiro Honda's obsession with racing technology for the road. The S2000 wasn't just a new car, it was a continuation of that dream. A modern S800 reborn through decades of engineering evolution. It was designed to honor Honda's 50th anniversary, not with nostalgia, but with proof that the company's spirit was still alive. It wasn't meant to compete with other roadsters. It was meant to surpass them technically, emotionally, and spiritually. At its core lived a miracle of engineering the F20C, a naturally aspirated two liter engine producing 240 horsepower, a record 120 horsepower per liter. At the time, no other production engine on earth. Not even Ferraris achieved that kind of efficiency at the time. But the numbers were just the consequence of obsession. The F20C was built like a race engine designed to live above 8,000 RPM. Its pistons were forged aluminum running inside fiber reinforced metal sleeves, a material so hard it nearly messed up Honda's own machinery. Its valve train used lightweight materials and low friction coatings borrowed from Honda's Formula One development experience. Its mean piston speed reached 25 meters per second, rivaling the very engines that ran in F1 at the time. This wasn't a road car engine pretending to be a racer, it was a racer that somehow passed emission tests. Honda's engineers didn't just want power, they wanted response. Every part of the F20C was tuned to feel like an extension of the throttle cable itself. It didn't just rev, it rose. But Uehara knew the S2000's magic couldn't come from power alone. It had to move like a thought. His team designed an all new X Bone chassis, a structural masterpiece that gave the S2000 a rigidity unheard of in convertibles. Even with no fixed roof, it was stiffer than an NSX. They mounted the engine entirely behind the front axle, a front midship layout, to achieve perfect 50 50 balance. Steering was immediate. Turn in was razor sharp. Every corner felt like an experiment in physics and intuition. And then there was the gearbox, a six speed manual so precise it's still used as a benchmark today. Short throws, mechanical click, perfection resonance, no digital filters. No drive modes. Uehara once said, the car should feel like it's wired directly to your brain. That was the design brief. Inside Honda's Tochigi RD lab, the S2000 wasn't built by marketers or executives. It was crafted by racers in lab coats. Engine specialist Toru Akita led endurance testing for the F20C, running engines for extended periods at 8,000 RPM to verify oil stability and balance. The chassis engineers obsessed over rigidity, so much that even the windshield frame was structural. The transmission team hand tuned synchros until the shift lever felt weightless yet deliberate. 
since all other companies were making economy platforms. I'm sure the executives at Honda were questioning the project's purpose at the time. Like, who's gonna buy this loud, uncompromising two-seater with no luxury, no automatic, and no turbo? Uehara's answer was simple, real drivers will. He fought to keep the car analog. No stability control, no soft suspension, no compromise. It was built not to please everyone, but to satisfy the few who could feel the difference. When the S2000 launched in 1999, journalists praised its precision and feared it. Its limitations were high, its reactions sharp. Early AP1 models were notorious for their snap oversteer. Critics called it twitchy, enthusiasts called it alive. You don't drive an S2000, you learned it. It punished clumsy inputs, but rewarded precision with ballet-like control. At the edge, it danced. Honda softened the later AP2 version, increasing stroke to 2.2 liters for more torque and dialing down the oversteer. For purists, still argue the original AP1 was the truest form of the idea. Raw, surgical, and untamed. Few engines feel so alive. Even today, over two decades later, the F20C remains one of the most celebrated naturally aspirated engines ever built. It wasn't just fast, it was flawless in character. A power band that built like a symphony. VTEC engagement that hit like an awakening. It taught an entire generation what high revving mastery feels like. When the S2000 ended production in 2009, it marked the close of Honda's analog era, the end of cars built purely for connection. But the lineage is undeniable, from the S600 and S800 to the S2000, to the hearts of the drivers who still chase Redline. It's the same story told in three generations, precision, purity, and passion. The F20C wasn't the loudest or the most powerful, but it may have been the last engine built for the soul, not the spreadsheet. In a world of turbochargers and touchscreens, it remains a reminder. Sometimes engineering perfection doesn't come from adding more. It comes from removing everything that gets in the way of feel. This was Honda's last stand for purity, a symphony of balance, precision, and passion, written in aluminum and oil. This was the F20C, this was the S2000. This was Honda's masterpiece. What forgotten legends do you want us to cover next? Let us know down in the comments. We're always digging for the overlooked and the obscure. Until next time, stay fast, stay curious, and never stop driving. Hatchan's normal is growing.